We are live, oh. everybody. Oops. We're live? We're live. And pointing at the ceiling. Yeah, you're pointing at the ceiling. There we go. Hey, find me. Find the camera. There you are. Got find the camera. Stay with me. Stay with us. What do we got in the studio here? This is Kat. Hi. Hey, Kat. Hey, Kat. Microphones Hi. are going on. Microphones are going on. And we're back in Talk Recovery, Vancouver Cult Radio, CFRO 100.5 FM. And we're back with Personal Story. Uh, this is Kat. Kat, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now, listen, let me just ask, what inspired you to come here today? Um, well, uh, I mean, like, I follow you guys on Facebook, so I see your, like, well, I watch some of them um, that come up. And Jill, I remember watching Jill when she was on it um, two years ago. And then Jill asked me, oh, would you be interested in doing this? And I agreed, yeah, because I mean, if I can share my story and that can help somebody, then um, then why not, right? Well said, <laughs> well said. Uh, what is your story? What Tell us a bit story? about the story. Um, okay, so my clean date uh, is September 26, 2017. So yeah, so over a year and a half now. And like for somebody like me, oh, Sorry, the squeaking of the chair. Um, for somebody like me, um, this miracle, because uh, I started coming around um, trying to get clean in 2006. And yeah, so it's a lot farther from that now. Um, and uh, yeah, like, um, where do you want me to start? Like beginning, beginning, or? Just, no, I mean, like, <laughs> the most recent, you know, you talked about being like, Outside in the streets. Yeah, you, like I'm you, a downtown east side junkie hooker, that kind of thing. Yeah, oh. <laughs> that's, that's my story, right? Like, um, you know, and it's funny because I come from a good family too, like a like upper middle class family. And um, it doesn't matter where you come from, you can end up down here. Um, and that's what happened to me. Um, I've been to like over 10 treatment centers. Um, I've been to detox, I don't know how many times, like uh, when the detox workers know you by first name, like you've created a relationship with them, right? Um, and um, you know, I've struggled for a really long time. And, uh, um, and this time when I got clean, like, um, you know, I thought I had figured everything out. I was living down here. Um, I was sleeping and eating every day, which isn't what I used to. I used to get really flailed out down here, right? Like people nicknamed me the helicopter because I'd be like <laughs> spinning. And anyways, and I learned how to sleep and eat every day. I had money for dope every day. And I, but the thing is like, I was just empty inside. And like, I was so sick of doing the same thing that groundhog day, every single day, the hustle every single day having to haul myself up to Kingsway to work another night. Like, um, it just, it wasn't doing it for me, right? And like, I think I finally reached a place where I got just sick and tired of being sick and tired. It wasn't that my body couldn't keep going. Cause a lot of time I'd get clean because my body couldn't do it anymore. Like, or I'd end up in the hospital or something like that. And this time it was like, no, like this is not the way I want to live. And um, I don't know, maybe it's just like, I keep, I was, I'm getting older, right? Like I can't keep doing this and, uh, you know, sketchier things keep happening, like, um, you know, overdose, like I overdosed behind the colonial one night, um, thank God a security guard would walk by or else I would have been, would have been dead. And, um, you know, all my friends down here were dying too, right? Like it was, um, yeah, it was time to get clean, right? So you, you sort of describe, you know, this being your, your life, your home. It's kind of like a second home to me in a way. It was anyways, right? And so how did you end up? Like, did, did sex work come in first? Or, like, did you did the drugs bring you to this area? Like, what was... Well, I I was on the streets of Winnipeg. Like, I'm from Winnipeg. Okay. Um, so I was on the streets there first. Um, and I was on the streets on and off from 16 and up. Um, I left when now, I was 19. Can I just ask, like, yeah. in your story, yeah. was this, was this a, a way of sort of, you know, being independent, like, working the streets, like... Like being an independent person, and that was just a resource. Well, I used to do crime, to do things on right? Your own. Okay, I used to do crime and all that. For and, drugs? Yeah, for drugs. Okay. Like to get money for drugs, and um, I was getting too sketchy for that. And then I found, um, you know, I could, you know, do like give a blowjob and you know get a bit of dope or whatever. And that's kind of how it started. Was just doing trades like that, like straight up trades for dope. And, um, and then I wasn't hurting anybody else either. And I wasn't at risk of going to jail in my mind because I went to jail and I didn't like it. Um, so that's how it started. And then it started like getting worse, right? Like, um, then I was like, actually, 
Um, you know, I did, I did work a bit like Jill for a second, but it wasn't my thing, right? Like I like going up on the corner and I like going and making money right away and being able to go get my dope right away. Cause I couldn't wait that long. I couldn't arrange a date and like figure that out. Like I needed my fix right away. Like it didn't work like that for me. Speaking from an addict's perspective. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Liking that, yeah. like that sense of ease and, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I needed it right away. Right. I couldn't wait around. Um, yeah. So, which is pretty, which is pretty typical for addiction, like any addiction to mm -hmm. the, the quickest way from getting to no dope to dope. Right? Exactly. And, and what are your resources? What environment are you in? Yeah. Is it, I mean, obviously that was the basis of that, but then it becomes like what, what Giuseppe and Jillian were talking mm -hmm. about, like this, this way of life yeah. that's hard to like, what else do I do? What else could I do? Did yeah. you struggle with that idea of getting clean? Um, well getting for me, like, um, or was it a, like, I'm never doing that again? Well, I got clean and I don't think for me, like I've never done it clean. So I, like, I've never been so clean and sober doing that. Right. So I don't know what it looked like, but when I got clean and sober, like I just didn't want it. Like it was scary. Cause there was like, you know, people, some girls were getting picked up by these white vans and not coming back. So for right. me, it was like, okay, I'm like free. Right. Like I don't have to risk my life. Like I got chased down by them once. Right. Like, um, almost got thrown into the back of this white van and they don't tell you these things on the news. Right. And, uh, yeah, um, so for me, it was like I was free and I wasn't going to die that night. You know what I mean? Like, it was, yeah, like, I mean, sometimes I think to myself, oh, could I possibly do it? Like, could I, um, but I just, I don't want to risk my, like, my recovery to do that, right? It's not worth it in my mind. So that, that tells me that, you know, if it's not something you've ever done clean, it's, it's, it's something that you would regret as a person getting clean or being clean, yeah. you know, like when your senses come back and your value system and you think yeah. of your family, like, like, is that, is that still a, a regret in your life? Like, is it something that, you know, you just say, well, or, or is it like something regret, you, like doing that work? Yeah. I mean, like, do you, do you carry guilt with you or is it this thing that, no. that led you to where you are today? Exactly. Like, and, um, you know, I probably end up being in jail for a long time if I wasn't doing that work too. Right. And, um, and for me, like it was a way I was independent too on the streets. Like it kept me, like I made my own money. I didn't have to, like, I didn't have, I didn't have to like cozy up to some like sleazy drug dealer to get what I wanted. I made my own money. Um, and I was independent in that way. And, um, and to be honest, like it, yeah, it's like, I wouldn't be where I am today without all the experiences I've had. Right. Um, so I don't regret like things that have happened. Like they all teach me lessons. Right. And especially living today. Mm. Yeah. Now we, we were just sort of discussing that, like, you know, whether you should speak of this at the, at the podium, you know, like outwardly to people. And then I thought to myself, like, you know, you don't, you don't hear it often. And mm -hmm. I think because of that sort of standard that's set that that's step five stuff, but then you don't know who is also relating and s struggling and can identify with that same story. Yeah. I mean, you know, you kind of have to like look at someone, get to know them, meet them, open up and then, and then find out the, this information. But like with women like you that's right true. now, after this show, like, you will you will be known as, as someone that that is that has gotten out that is like mm -hmm. you know live and 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 being able to live and speak about it is that is that meaningful to you do you do you struggle with like like the label of it with that label the, the judgment that's going to happen well okay so for instance like with my like my friends in recovery like no of course not and i'll talk at the podium about it but on a more of a higher level like i won't be like hey i was doing this for that like i'll be like yeah i'm like i was a downtown east side junkie hooker i'll say something like that yeah. like just more on a higher yeah, level no point. yeah right. yeah so that people know that that's part of my story and maybe they can relate to that and i think women should talk about these things because there's more and more women coming into the rooms nowadays that have dealt with these kind of things um but like for example like i'm in school right and so with like i don't tell a lot of my schoolmates like exactly what happened and it's in nursing too in the healthcare field right yeah. so like if i a couple of them i do know better and they know a little bit of my story but not to the full extent right like i mean if they ever hear this i guess they'll know and but um but so, when they hear it from this from this environment, yeah. from, mm -hmm. from this, you know, studio, from this perspective, from this show, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, 
Yeah. Like you, you know what I mean? Like that's when when labels don't mean anything. Like yeah. it's like obviously we're discussing if, this. And we for humanize a somebody, right? Humanize yeah. somebody in their experience. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is about a message. This is about, you know, uh, sacrificing that that potential uh, you know, self image and mm -hmm. just saying, Hey, like it's bigger than me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like, there's people out there that, that are holding this stuff mm -hmm. in and, and not knowing how to cope with it. Yeah. And like people in my class, they know I don't drink and they know I don't re like, I don't go on about it, but I think they assume cause I come to school wearing like sober and like fuck fentanyl street survivor shirts. So I think maybe they might have an idea <laughs> of what's going on. Well, but you're I don't... definitely an advocate for <laughs> certain things they know that yeah right yeah yeah but I, yeah and, and that's the cool thing it, it, you maybe you're speaking up for your sister that you you know that yeah. that od'd in your life like who knows yeah. right but yeah. like hey we're allowed to make the statement for sure yeah so good on you um what school is this that we're so i'm in school for nursing right now so i'm taking my lpn which is uh, almost two years and i'm halfway done so that's exciting. Um, wow. Yeah, like it's like I finally found what I'm really meant to do in life, like and help people and like you know I want to work with this population down here, right? And um, yeah, so it's kind of exciting. Yeah, well, that's uh, I'm, I I love that like you know when it's more about just like yeah I'm just going back to school. It's something I've always done. When there's like there's already a goal beyond schooling of of helping. Yeah, you know these that's. And it's funny, I used to always think, oh, I have to wait till I have a year clean before I, like, go to school, before I do anything. And this yeah. time I was like, fuck it, I need some goals, right? Like, so, oh, so am I allowed to say that? No. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, sorry. So I need some goals. So that I did it, and, you know, it's worked out because I have these, like, goals that I'm working towards, right, to improve my life. Now, you know, that you say, like, wait a year clean, like, yeah, you're, you're new, newer, mm -hmm. right? Um, not, you know, not comparing yourself to my my clean time or anything like that but <laughs> it's like it, it is it like uh, uh I, the first two years i'm just thinking of my first two years like it signifies a lot of change a lot of learning a lot of self-awareness a mm -hmm. lot of things that like yeah it makes sense why they say don't start too soon you know with certain you know whether it's relationships or or you know taking on a big workload or mm -hmm. school load or things like that why why is it working for you well, to, to yeah. go all in well, I tried it other ways, right? Like I tried waiting around and, you know, just going to meetings and, uh, you know, getting work here and there. But for me, I think I needed to just fully, th and I fully threw myself in everything. That's including the 12 step stuff as well, right? Like I got a service position doing detox panel every second week right away. Um, I, like I started going to school right away, upgrading at first. And then I went in full time. I mean, I worked two jobs. Like I kind of just, I, know, I kept adding things to my plate, I guess, um, while doing my recovery as well. Because I remember um, when I came in, when I came back in 2008, I was back for about over, a little over a year. And I didn't do anything for the first year. I just like went to meetings, sat on welfare, um, mm. volunteered at the recovery club, um, did stuff like that. And then well, as soon as I was a year clean, I just started adding everything to my plate. I went to, I started going to school. I had a full-time job and like I got a boyfriend you know, and all that stuff takes away from your recovery, right? It takes away time. You can be doing that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I, and like, it just got so overwhelming. I stopped doing the recovery stuff. So for me, I felt like I need to learn how to juggle everything. Right. Um, and have these goals, right. That is improving my life, not being stuck in some dead end job like that I'm unhappy in. Um, yeah. So I needed to do things differently and I did, and it's worked for me. It doesn't mean it's going to work for somebody else. This is just what's worked for me. So and it's, it's funny when like the less or the least amount that you invest in an early recovery, then the less you have to lose mm -hmm. is, is sort of my theory. Oh yeah. I can right? see. Yeah. So, you know, and they talk about triggers in the, in the first year and, and well, for the rest of your life, I guess, you know, things that are going to like snap you out of what you have and, and make you crave the old life mm -hmm. again. Right. So you know, coming into this area, does that happen for you? Did it happen before and why isn't it happening now? For me, it's more of an emotional trigger that I have. It's not seeing these things and seeing these people because these people were my family for a long time, right? right? Like, and, and like I see people and I'll talk to them like walking down the street saying, hey, how are you doing? Do you need like some change? Do you need some, like a cigarette or something like that? And um, yeah, so like coming down here doesn't affect me, but see if I was maybe like having an emotional day where I'm feeling really crappy about myself, my self-worth is low, um, I'm not spiritually fit, 
um, then I can see being around here to be maybe an issue. But like that's like having that self-awareness of myself of not to come around these areas in that position. And also if I have a point of coming down here, like there's a reason why I'm coming down here, then that's good. If I'm just coming down here for like a jolly old walk, like I mean, like <laughs> that's not really what I do, right? I come down here, I'm doing a panel down here. I'm coming down here because I'm here coming to this radio show. Like there's reasons why I would come through and I come through the actually on the bus all the time yeah. through it on the bus. Like well, what about specific women that, that may be like your sisters mm -hmm. that are, are in that, that old lifestyle that, that, that you described having like mm -hmm. is there is there a, a desire to come down and pluck them out of here and tell them like there's another way or do you know that that's sort of like well if I see them I tell them my experience right okay. because attraction not promotion right um and like a lot of them know about like my story too so and I have some of them on Facebook too um so I mean if they ask me and they ask me if they wanted help then okay but you can't force somebody to do it unfortunately like for me, anyways, I remember people used to, I'd be like standing on the corner on Cordova and like somebody would drive by and run recovery and be like, get in the car, we're going to a meeting. And I'd be like, <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. Like, like I have to um, come to a place on my own where I want to change. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I have been interventioned before, like too, with family. Um, that's when I, in 2008, when I came back, I was interventioned and I did stay for over a year in that situation. So I can see how it can maybe work in that way as well. But for me, like, like the next following years and all that it was really I had to be my choice because people but actually also to this time people from um, AA and NA would come down and talk to me they'd be like okay hey, cat like please come back because everybody's dying right? right like it's all the offense and all stuff is happening and I mean they did plant those seeds for me too right so when I was ready I knew that I could it was easier to be able to connect with somebody for them to help me does that make sense yeah when did you know you were ready like what was that like um to be honest, it wasn't like anything special that happened. It was just like, I was just sick and tired of doing the same sh crap. <laughs> I got that one. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the same crap every single day. Like, like I did the exact same thing day in and day out. Like it never changed. And um, yeah, it was just, I got sick of it. And these people, that they, they're in the back, like, you know, it's in the back of my head, right? Like, okay, maybe there still is hope because I thought that, there, that this was the last time like I'd be stuck down here forever. Like I've tried so many times, it's never gonna work for me. And they kind of planted those seeds that there is maybe a possibility like for some hope, right? And so I just, one day it just clicked and I asked for help and I went to the Sunshine Coast and my parents detoxed me over there actually. Mm. <laughs> Poor things. <laughs> Yeah, I've tried that a few times. Yeah, I'm like, whatever I say, don't drive me back. Don't drive me back. And then, like, I had to bring, like, I brought my dad, like, illicit methadone for him to, like, taper me, like, while I was over there. Wow. And, like, poor guy, like, they're not into this stuff. Like, they don't know this stuff. And he's, like, Mesh. <laughs> the things parents will do. Oh, yeah, but, I mean, I, it took me three weeks to detox. But, yeah. um, but, you know, it worked, and then, yeah, I stayed. So I don't know what's different this time. It's, like... I just, I don't know what's different, but I mean, that's the thing I didn't give up, right? And I kept trying to, like, yeah. I've been in and out for a lot of years, over a decade. And so I kept trying and I kept coming back no matter what, right? And I think, um, you know, eventually something will stick. That's, I mean, to know that, that those seeds that are planted, like when you walk by and you give somebody a little hope or you, you let them know to call you, you know, that, mm -hmm. that it seems so futile at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. But to know that, like, it, whether it takes years or, or months or whatever, like that those seeds eventually grow and, and yeah. you know, you know, some people, yeah, some people don't get to get to reach out and, and that's, and that's sad. We can't save everyone, but mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is why we have these personal stories and, and, yeah. and people like yourself to come in. And I mean, that's amazing. Like think how many seeds we've, we've been able to plant today. Right. Yeah. So yeah. there's, there's, you guys are like going to be writing some more and yeah. some more stories. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, I can't, I can't really like imagine like that this, that this topic is, has been kept like such a secret, you know, yeah. and, and like that it is something old school, like, Oh no, save it for, for you and one other person. And it's just like, I love where we're going nowadays yeah, with, with the voice and the words and the language. And it's just like, you know, yeah, it's hard when someone's brand new to coach them to like share everything that you've done, <laughs> yeah. right? Like as soon as you get out, because we're vulnerable people, yeah. right? And, and we see the judgment, we see the eyes, right? But 
you know, like obviously you have some people around you that, uh, you know, yeah, are, are going to sort of coach you and guide you in the right way. And I think that the 12 step like programs are changing, like we're changing, everything changes. And like sometimes people have to change with that change and um, being more open about it, being more, you know, being able to talk about different things, like going to an AA thing and being able to talk about drugs, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, who cares? Like, people are changing, right? And we need to go with that change. Well, you're definitely, you guys are definitely a part of the revolution that's going on, uh, and we're, we're happy to be a part of it, too. Thank you very much, Kat, for Thank coming you. in today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Wow, time by, goes by quick. <laughs> um, and we're going to end, uh, oh, we're going to end with the classic Doors, Roadhouse Blues. Kick it off, and we'll see you next week, everybody. Okay. Hello. All right, Jillian. Say bye to your fans. Bye. Thanks, Kat. That was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like sweating right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you have your jacket on. I know. Well, I wasn't sweating Get before. Get in the high studio. Yeah.